friends, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here on the western side of Canada. In fact, on Vancouver Island on the southern tip, not far from the U.S. Welcome, Kanupriya, Hailin, Marjona, Alicia. Nice to see so many students. Welcome, Rahul, Baljeet. Good to see our members joining into this class as well. Students, uh, right now we are going to be looking at uh, IELTS, a speaking part three, band nine. Uh, lending and borrowing. So we're continuing on with this topic of borrowing and lending for speaking part three. If you saw our uh, speaking part two class 30 minutes ago, you know that it was on the topic of borrowing. And of course, this class is uh, an all chat class where everybody can join the chat. And um, we are going to have interactive uh, speaking where everybody will uh, have a chance to uh, practice their speaking, get some feedback for some of you on your speaking uh, with some band score uh, estimates. Uh, students, uh, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com uh, for general IELTS. Check us out there for over 100 hours of videos, more than 400 slides of instruction, six full practice exams. The websites uh, look like this. This is our academic IELTS website here. We'll use this today um, to talk with some students. Click this big red button to join our premium package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access and uh, you can use this uh, discount code above my head there uh, better nouns 25 coming from our latest video to get a 25 percent discount general IELTS looks like this gieltshelp.com click that big red button um, to uh, join our premium package there um, and again um, to get our apps uh, academic IELTS help, general IELTS help in your app stores. Follow us on Instagram right over there. Um, IELTS underscore A E help and G IELTS help. Uh, join and learn English with world class materials. Use the discount code better nouns 25. Um, students, our class schedule, you can also find this on Instagram and of course on YouTube. So tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday, no class, but then more classes on uh, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, Wednesday to Saturday. Um, if you have questions, send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. Now, uh, let's take a look at speaking part three. So repeat these questions after me. Okay, and the goal here is to answer, explain, example. That's what we will focus on in this class. Okay, all right. Uh, so um, let's talk about borrowing and lending. Just repeat the questions after me for now and we will practice the answers in these questions together. When is it a good idea to borrow an item instead of buying it? Can you give some examples? Have lending and borrowing customs changed since a generation before? Can you elaborate? What are good policies to follow when lending expensive objects to friends or family? Can there be negative outcomes to lending valuable items? Okay. All right, students, uh, let's practice this a little bit together uh, first. So let's jump over to our syllabus here. Um, again, if uh, somebody has a question, you can send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. Okay, um, and uh, here are the questions again. So. 
our goal is to um, answer, explain, give examples, and we want to use our part two information. Okay, so answer plus explain plus example plus uh, use uh, ideas and information from your part two planning and response. All right, we had some really good ideas there in part two. In fact, uh, let me uh, take a look at that here in a second. Um, I'm going to open this up and maybe just copy it over uh, from our uh, previous uh, lesson. So if you bear with me, I will grab uh, some of our information. So probably lots of you remember that in the last class, uh, we talked about um, borrowing a notebook from our classmate uh, to help us with a uh, biology exam. And um, we want to remember all these notes here. Uh, I just grabbed this information from the last class. Here we go. So last class we talked about borrowing a notebook. And notes uh, from uh, a peer, Aaron, for biology class. Okay, that's what we talked about. And the students in the last class said that, you know, we could borrow a sweatshirt from a boyfriend, some clothing, right? Uh, a phone uh, from a friend, so maybe some kind of digital device. All right, hi Bahora, hi Islam Job. All right, uh, maybe a vacuum cleaner, so some kind of home appliance from a neighbor, All right? You could borrow some kind of transportation device like a motorbike from a sister, a bike, car from an uncle, uh, some kind of a tool, ladder from your dad, maybe a hammer, okay? Or something for work or school like uh, notes for school, right? So those ideas you want to keep in mind. Okay, so the examiner says um, that is the end of part two. Now let's continue with part three. For part three, I will ask you uh, more questions related to the topic of part two. Let's talk about borrowing and lending, okay? So when is it a good idea to borrow an item instead of buying it, okay? Give me some nice uh, full sentence answers uh, for this one, okay? So when is it a good idea to borrow an item instead of buying it? All right, uh, Rahul in our chat says, this is Rahul's response. Okay. So Rahul says, uh, when you want to use any item only for once or very occasionally and quite costly, just buy that item for once or twice, then it is just to borrow rather than to buy it. All right, I kind of get your idea, Rahul, although the grammar is very confusing. So let me correct this, Rahul, and show you how you should answer this. So when a person, don't use you, when a person uh, wants to use not any item, just an item, an item only once or occasionally and it is quite costly uh, costly to buy okay we don't need this because you've already mentioned it an item to buy, also it's confusing grammar, uh, then um, it is better to borrow it rather than to purchase it. Not buy it because you already said buy, so let's use um, 
a synonym, okay, uh, purchase it uh, to save time and money. Okay, so this would be a much more accurate answer, Rahul. Okay, all right, so when is it a good idea to borrow an item instead of buying it? When a person wants to use an item only once or occasionally, and it is quite costly to buy, then it is better to borrow it rather than to purchase it, to save time and money, okay? All right, um, let's see if anybody has uh, some more to add to this, perhaps. Okay, Baljeet says, I think there are two uh, good instances to borrow an object from someone uh, in an emergency or when using the item only once. All right. Yeah. Uh, Ko Duong, Koa Duong says, when a person wants to use the item only once immediately, in other hands uh, or uh, in other cases, if that person did not prepare an item they needed for doing some activities, so they borrow it. Don't use the word stuffs, Koa. Doesn't make sense, okay? All right. Um, <clears throat> Vitalina says, nevertheless, when somebody needs something only once or for a short period of time, it is okay to ask help for one's nearest and dearest. Um, Vitalina, it's some awkward use of English with nearest and dearest, and somebody and something is quite vague. Uh, Romaine says, expensive items we intend to use occasionally are worth borrowing rather than purchasing them. Romaine, that's pretty good. Um, don't forget your part two, students. So, uh, or uh, when an item cannot be bought, such as school notes. Uh, that I spoke of, it is better uh, to borrow these uh, than to offer money, okay? Yeah, I mean, in school, I wouldn't sell my notes, especially if I'm still using them for my class. Uh, so, although sometimes students sell their notes, but still, uh, some items are not really for sale, so people can only borrow them or when an item cannot be bought, such as school notes that I spoke of, it is better to borrow these than to offer money. Okay, so don't forget um, part two, all right? Uh, now, <clears throat> um, can you give some examples or can you give an example? So this could be the follow-up question from the examiner. And then this is where you could say like, um, <clears throat> sure, I needed to uh, borrow um, a van from uh, my neighbor uh, who is a carpenter so that I could uh, move my uh, couch to my brother's house. Usually, I do not need such a large uh, vehicle, so it made more sense to borrow it, right? So that would be an example, okay? Repeat after me. Can you give an example? Sure, I needed to borrow a van from my neighbor who is a carpenter so that I could move my couch to my brother's house. Usually, I do not need such a large vehicle, so it made more sense to borrow it. Okay. Um, let's see if uh, somebody else has come up with a different example of where a person borrows uh, an item. Okay, Bakrat um, says, this is for an example. Okay. Let's see. Bakrat says, <clears throat> I borrowed a bicycle um, for 
a morning long walk from my neighborhood instead of going market to purchase for only 10 minute walk. Okay, I'm not sure what you're saying, Bakrat, but I'm going to guess. So I borrowed a bicycle uh, from uh, my neighbor. Uh, to go to the uh, market because I did not have time to walk okay um, and it made more sense than buying a bike then buying a bike since I usually do not I'm not in a rush okay so um, I think that's what you're trying to say Bharat you have to really pay attention to your word order and your grammar. Students, make sure that you are paying attention to clear English communication. Okay? All right. Uh, Saj says, once I forgot my calculator for my test, so I borrowed it from my benchmate um, to uh, be able to do calculations. Very good, Saj. Afrin says, I borrowed a uh, watercolor painting from my uncle so that I, I could improve uh, my drawing with more details. Afrin, that's a little bit of a strange example. All right, but you're getting the idea. Okay, so this is how it works. Um, students, uh, we've done uh, some practice on uh, paper pen. Now let's do it um, with our voice. So let's... Um, Take some volunteers uh, for uh, speaking for part three, okay? Um, so first of all, register a free or a paid account at aehelp.com. Um, once you have that account, then go to your My Student account. Go to Student Partner Speaking. Okay, I'm going to show you this, so don't panic. Make sure to enable your phone um, in your browser, okay? Test it with another user. I'm gonna add this here. So test this with another user, okay? I don't think people are testing their system and they're not um, making sure that their microphone is enabled or uh, their mobile phone is not able to use multiple um, audio channels at the same time. So you have to test it, okay? Uh, keep the window open and then um, send me a message. You're going to see me as master. I'm going to change that to Adrian so that it's a little bit clearer. Okay. Um, in fact, I'll make a note for myself to change my handle from master to Adrian. Okay. Um, so let's do this. Uh, let me show you how. Okay. All right, go to the website, not this green one, but go to the one with the blue background, this one here, okay? Uh, click on this big red button to get our premium package. Again, it's a one-time payment for lifetime access. Use the code BETTERNOUNS25, um, or if you just want to use it for free, use Try Demo. Uh, it's definitely worth the paid account if you like these classes and want to get all our videos. And then um, you have this My Student account at the top there, okay? So click on that My Student account to access all of your computer-based practice exams, lesson videos, uh, your apps for your phone. And then right there above my head, you see Student Partner Speaking, right there, okay? Uh, click on that Student Partner Speaking, accept the terms. This means that you're going to uh, speak politely and respectfully, okay? And then you will be in our chat interface. That's for IELTS students. This is where you can practice your IELTS with other students. So we have Mohammed, 
We have uh, Shok Ruch, um, Tina, Ikram, Pushpendra, Puja, and lots more students in here. Um, and this is when you want to test your microphone, test your speakers, make sure you can uh, connect with someone. So talk to another student first, and then you'll find me in here under master. Okay, I can't see myself because I'm master. Um, and then this is where you can volunteer to answer some questions. And for instance, I see Siddharth is here and Siddharth is probably messaging me with, um, hi Adrian, let's see if Siddharth wants to volunteer. So, hi Siddharth, would you like to volunteer? And I'll ask you a question, give me an answer, just do your best, take it easy. Stay calm um, and uh, I will give you feedback and I will give you a score estimate. And this will also help other students as well, okay? So Siddharth says, of course, yes. Awesome, Siddharth, so you'll be the first volunteer in this class, it's perfect. Okay, we even have an Elon Musk in here. <laughs> All right. Hello. Hi, Siddharth. Adrian, can you hear me? I can hear you, Siddharth. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good, thank you. Yeah, I had a good night's rest and I'm feeling energetic. It's early morning, 7.30 here for me. How about for okay. you, Siddharth? What time is it? Uh, it's uh, 9 o'clock here. I'm from India. Okay. You're getting yeah. ready to sleep and I'm just getting ready for the day. <laughs> That's right, yeah. But I sleep at 11, 11.30, so not yet time for me. I just had my dinner now. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Good. Was it delicious? It was delicious, yeah. Good. So uh, I had some idli that was prepared by my mom. Oh, nice. I'm looking yeah. forward to breakfast, so you're making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, so I'll ask you a part three question, uh, Siddharth. Okay. Give me a nice full yeah. sentence answer, and then I okay. will give you some feedback, okay? Okay, yeah. All right. So uh, let's talk about uh, borrowing and lending. Okay. Have lending and borrowing customs changed since a generation before? Uh, I think that yes, it has changed uh, uh, in the recent years. So, uh, People nowadays uh, of borrow a lot of uh, valuable items from others because uh, they need to use it occasionally. They don't want to use it at a regular intervals. Uh, so they uh, borrow it and uh, after use it, they give it back to them. So <laughs> that's all it is, yeah. Okay, and they don't want to borrow regularly. Okay. I'm, I'm not getting ideas actually yeah all right I, I felt that yeah okay yeah um so uh good okay so i think your speaking is actually a band seven easily okay um okay, I, okay. I i actually think you should get higher once you practice a bit because i think your mm -hmm. grammar is very clear you're very confident mm -hmm. in english okay. and yeah i can tell that the biggest problem you had here was for ideas not for english yes um That's so true, yeah. the the question here of course then uh siddharth mm -hmm. is is you know like how do i get some ideas quickly right um mm -hmm. first of all yeah. first of all buy yourself time um when we're asking about change over time especially between past generation and now usually mm -hmm. the answer is yes um it's very rare oh that there is no change. So you mm -hmm. can start by answering the question, and I think you did that well. You said, um, I think that yes, it has changed in recent years. So you started there, okay? Yeah. And I think that was good. But then you realize that, oh, how did it change? I don't really know. Right? <laughs> so That's right. <laughs> so that's where you want to buy a little bit of time, and it's okay to do that, because if I mm -hmm. hear that your English is good, then mm -hmm. it's absolutely okay to ask for time to think of your answer mm -hmm. because I know you're not thinking of English, I know you're thinking of the answer. So you can say something like, um, I just need a moment 
Mm -hmm. Uh, To think of uh, how this custom uh, has changed. And then when you do that, as soon as you do that, Mm -hmm. you want to visualize it. So picture like your grandparents borrowing or lending to their neighbors and then Mm -hmm. picture yourself borrowing or lending. So here, Mm -hmm. when you see your grandparents borrowing or lending, what do you Mm -hmm. see? Um, (laughs) I don't know. Just try, try. Um, So what, what is, okay, your grandma just went over to their neighbor and she's borrowing. What is she borrowing? Uh, um, I don't know, Adrian. Yeah. Probably some simple item. So if I if I visualize okay. uh, my, um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that must be. Yeah, that must be something like a plate, something like a utensil. Okay, utensil. Sure. Yeah, a cooking utensil. That would be a, a good yeah. one to visualize. Cooking utensil. Yeah. And see, you're coming, yeah. yeah, and you're coming up with um, nice uh, vocabulary here, like um, mm-hmm. large chef knife, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, mm-hmm. you're going over to your friend. What are you borrowing? Uh, that'll be probably a hard drive. Hard drive. Okay. Yeah. Good. See, so now you have a pretty good idea of how it has changed. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So how about you try this again? Because I think you can give a much better answer now that you saw the picture, right? So visualizing is key to good communication and you have to practice that. So when you have good English, like what you have, then it's much yeah. more about focusing on the content. So don't worry about English too much for you. you that's okay. I can hear it. Mm-hmm. That you have the vocabulary. Focus on your communication skill, just seeing it. Okay. So let me ask okay. you this one more time and I think you'll do much better. Here we go. Um, yeah. Have lending and boring customs changed since a generation before? Certainly it has changed a lot in the recent years. So I remember my grandparents uh, borrowing utensils uh, from the neighbors. Nowadays, uh, people borrow expensive items like mobile phones. Um, Last time I just borrowed my friend's bicycle to travel a few kilometers away to a store to buy some items. So to answer your questions, yes, uh, definitely. uh, the trend of borrowing has changed a lot in the recent years. Okay, much better, much, much better. Okay. So that that was a clear 7.5, even an 8, maybe even an 8.5, okay. okay? There was still a little bit of awkwardness in there, but it was definitely much better, much clearer answer. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Um, so based on what you saw, my answer would be following what you said. And you can repeat this after me, okay? So once okay. I finish, just repeat. Um, yeah, I think that it has changed in recent years. I just need a moment to think of how this custom has changed. Well, during my grandparents' time, people borrowed simpler items like uh, sugar or a cooking utensil from the neighbor. But nowadays, Mm -hmm. uh, people have been borrowing uh, gadgets, technology, um, as these have become much more popular. Uh, I recently borrowed a hard drive from my friend. Okay, Okay. Um, so one more time. Um, Have lending and boring customs changed since a generation before? Oh, yes, certainly it has changed. I uh, remember my grandparents borrowing sugar and utensils from their neighbors. And in the recent years, uh, as the technology has evolved a lot, people borrow items like mobile phones, iPads from their neighbors. That's a bad nine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot. It really means a lot. Yeah. Yeah, so that's how that's how you move from that band seven to a very clear band nine. Okay, notice oh, how okay. in that last answer you use the present perfect. So the question is in present perfect. Have lending um, and borrowing customs changed? And in your mm-hmm. last answer, in your third one, you used the present mm-hmm. perfect very confidently, very clearly, um, at least mm-hmm. two, but I think three times to show that change over time. That was very good. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Thanks. Right. Thanks. Only the only problem I feel is when I'm anxious. I'm not able to speak. So that's the only problem and getting ideas. So if I get a question where I can't uh, produce any idea, then, you know, it's it's like a trap, yeah. (laughs) I I understand that. And that's why, again, so for any candidate that's at your level, it's not about focusing so much on technical English like grammar and vocabulary, but it's focusing more on evolving your uh, communication skills and visualizing and practicing what we just did. That's the way to do it. Okay, Siddharth? 
Yeah. Thanks. All Thanks right. a lot, Adrian, for all the help. You are very welcome, Siddharth. Have an awesome okay. rest of your night. And then once you get to yeah. bed, have some good sleep. Sure. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thanks. Bye. All right. That was Siddharth. And give Siddharth some thumbs up. He did a fantastic job. And uh, notice how his response nicely evolved as he started to see the context of uh, what he was saying um, with a bit of help from me, of course. All right. Um, so thank you, Siddharth. Uh, let's uh, take another volunteer um, from uh, maybe another part of the world. Um, uh, okay. Uh, let's try Juan Pablo. I believe he's over in Argentina. We haven't heard his voice in a while. So Juan uh, says, I'm kind of available. Haha. -ha. Okay, Juan, well, let's see if you are. Are you ready? Okay. Juan Pablo. Let's see if we can catch him. He's a little bit closer to my time zone, if I'm not mistaken. He's about three hours ahead of me. So he'll be coming up on lunch soon. Hopefully Juan's there. And while I'm waiting for Juan, I'll take a peek at who else is in our chat here. Who else we can know? Oh, it looks like Elon Musk is there too. Okay, well, I'm really uh, curious to, to hear Elon Musk um, in here. So let's talk to Elon Musk. Okay, <laughs> are you ready? Let's see if we can catch Elon Musk. Is it the real Elon Musk? Or is it somebody named Elon Musk or somebody who likes Elon Musk? Students, make sure to keep this page open. And uh, remember, I'm always first um, uh, sending you a message because I want to make sure that you haven't left um, your computer or you're not uh, maybe playing a video game at the same time. Elon Musk seems ready. Okay. Hello, um, Elon. Or you're not uh, maybe playing a video game. Hi, Elon. Hi. Hi. Uh, how are you? Uh, I'm good. Can't be better. <laughs> awesome. How about you? I'm doing great, thank you. And may I ask, is your real name Elon Musk? Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> Or are Musk. you a fan of Elon Musk? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan of Elon Musk. <laughs> okay, and what should I call you? Um, I, I want to keep it private. Okay, I can I can call you Elon. It's, yeah, it's you can't call Elon, right? <laughs> yeah, it's not a problem. All right, Elon. Um, so uh, may I ask where you are in this world right now? Uh, I'm from Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan. Okay. All right. So about halfway around the world from where I am. All right, Elon. Well, uh, let's practice a uh, speaking part three question together. So just like with Siddharth, I'm going to uh, ask you a question and then I will give you some feedback after. Sounds good? <coughs> okay. All right. Um, here we go. So we're still talking about borrowing and lending. Um, what are good policies to follow when lending expensive objects to friends or family? Uh, could you repeat the question? Sure. Uh, what are good policies to follow when lending expensive objects to friends or family? Uh, uh, that's an interesting question uh, that I actually don't have idea. Um, Can there be negative outcomes to lending valuable items? Elon, are you still there? I think we lost Elon. I'm not sure if he hung up on me or um, if uh, we just lost the connection, but Elon, I will give you some feedback regardless, okay? And you're being courageous for volunteering, that was great, okay? So 
I asked Elon this question, um, what are good policies to follow when lending expensive objects to friends or family? And Elon said, uh, could you repeat the question? So yeah, sure, I can. The examiner can repeat the question. You can ask them to do that once or twice. Worst case scenario, they go to the next question. Okay, uh, best case scenario, they repeat the question, you clearly understand it, and you give a good answer. It's absolutely okay to do that. And then Elon said, that's an interesting question that I actually ha don't have an idea for. Okay, um, it is also okay to do that once in the IELTS exam. You can still get a really good score as long as you answer the other questions during your exam well. At times we get stuck for ideas. At times we don't really know what to say and it's better to say, I don't really have an idea um, for this topic. Let's just go to the next question. It's better than giving a strange off topic, unclear response. So it's okay. And then the examiner will just go to the next question and they'll say, can there be negative outcomes to lending valuable items? So students keep in mind, this is professional conversation with the examiner and you are not expected to be able to answer all the questions. If you can't answer a question clearly, ask to go to the next question. Okay, and that's what I did. All right, um, let's take another volunteer. So that was uh, Elon from Uzbekistan um, and Elon says some problems occurred. Uh, that's totally fine, Elon, no worries. Thank you for volunteering. Everybody give Elon a thumbs up he was brave volunteering from Uzbekistan um, and you know next time come back and try again okay all right uh, let's take a different uh, volunteer Advait is being really <laughs> ambitious Advait says hey I'm up for the test can I speak can I get the chance take me 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 I'm here okay Advait are you ready sounds you sound very ambitious so let's give it a shot are you ready I'm pretty sure you are based on the, <laughs> yep, <laughs> right, okay, sounds good. All right, and I can see Cass can't volunteer today because she's at work, Simran's got a written answer, those are good too. I'm waiting for Advait to pick up the, uh, ring but nobody's picking up on mobile phone it's going to be a little bit trickier so Advait if you're on mobile um, you have to maybe double tap your screen to pick up okay I'm gonna give someone else a shot here Advait I'm not sure what's going on on your end but again students um, we have these classes regularly so a great way to make sure that I pick up is, um, or that you pick up, is to test it with another person first. Uh, let's give Bharat a chance. Okay, Bharat, are you ready? Bharat is a regular member of our uh, channel, and uh, I'm glad that you volunteered, Bharat. I don't always see you volunteering, so I want to give you a chance if you are there. Okay, to answer this question. And um, when you're here, hang in there, uh, ladies, gents, because you never know who's picking up, who's not, and when you might have the chance to uh, try one of these questions and get some potentially very valuable feedback for your uh, next IELTS exam. So check the chat and um, you never know, you could be next. All right. Uh, hi there. Hi, Bharat. Hi, sir. Uh, how are you? I'm doing great, thank you. How are you? Uh, I'm also doing great. I'm glad that you volunteered. I don't always see you in the chat. So it's good to have you. Uh, thank you. Okay, uh, Bharat, so I will ask you a question. Give me a nice full sentence answer and I will give you feedback, okay? Okay. All right, so still talking about lending and borrowing. Um, mm -hmm. Same question. What are good policies to follow when lending expensive objects to friends or family? 
Well, uh, I believe uh, I'm lending an object from friend and family. There should be agreement before it. Uh, this could be a uh, more. Uh, this could can give more impact, negative impact, when the uh, when the agreement will not be uh, satisfied. And I can give an example that uh, last time. Someone, uh, some, someone, someone of my friend lent an object, and uh, which is my my bike, and I wasn't, uh, I was, I was not make a agreement because uh, we are close. So he uh, broke my bumper of my bike, and it, uh, it took me. Uh, fifty dollar to refurbish. Okay. All right. Um, not bad, Bharat. Not bad. <clears throat> that was a solid band six. Okay. Um, and uh, with a little bit more fluency and a little bit more accuracy, it could be a band seven. Okay. So six. Uh, I think six. Yeah. I would say six. Um, so uh, you answered the question. I did understand. Uh, I think you were fairly fluent. Um, the fluency was maybe around five five, but you made up for fluency with uh, a bit of um, content and vocabulary, <laughs> like using refurbish. Okay. Uh, so you said, well, I believe when lending an object from friend and family. Be really careful, students. Um, this is not just you, Bharat, but so many people make this mistake. Um, you borrow from and you lend to. Okay, Bharat? Mm -hmm. So repeat yeah. after me. Borrow from. Borrow from. Lend to. Lend to. Okay, so I believe when lending an object to friends and family. Um, friends and family there should be an agreement in place not for it for it it's a bit strange in place uh and then i couldn't catch what you said in the middle here but i believe you said something along the lines of uh this could avoid um negative impact let's say that so this could avoid negative impact when they are not uh satisfied with what with the exchange right satisfied mm -hmm. with the situation so we want to finish this and then you said i can give an example just be really careful when you do that barat you know how we have that video about don't say for example um it's better to just give the example so start right away with when okay so uh when one of my friends one of many so it's always a plural noun when one of my friends lent an object which is my bike hmm that's confusing because they didn't lend the object they borrowed the object right it's the opposite exchange here so when one of my friends borrowed my bike okay keep it simple borrowed my bike mm -hmm. i was not making an agreement i did not make an agreement okay so wrong verb there i did not make an agreement and he broke my bike um, I was angry because um, it not took me $50, it cost me $50. So watch your word choice. It cost me $50 to refurbish um, and he did not pay a dime. Um, that's a, an expression which means he didn't pay any money at all. Okay, especially, I think it's maybe very Canadian. The dime is the 10 cent coin. Okay, so that would be a much uh, more accurate um, answer, okay? Uh, with some slight corrections. I'm going to read this and then repeat after me. Does that sound good? Yeah. All right, so here we go. Uh, what are good policies to follow when lending expensive objects to friends or family? Well, um, I believe when lending an object to friends and family, there should be an agreement in place. This could avoid negative impact when they are not satisfied with the situation. Uh, when one of my friends borrowed my bike, I did not make an agreement and he broke my bike. I was angry 
because it cost me $50 to refurbish and he didn't pay a dime. Uh, what are good policies to follow when lending expensive objects to friends or family? Uh, well, I believe lending an object to friends and family, there should be an agreement in place. This could avoid negative impact when they are not satisfied with the situation. When one of my friends borrowed my bike, I did not make an agreement and he broke my bike. I, wa I was very angry because it cost me $50 to refurbish and he did not pay a dime. That's beautiful. That was a, that was a clear band eight to even band nine. Okay. So very smooth, very nice. Your pronunciation is fine. I understood every single word. That was very accurate, clear grammar, great content. That's what you want to do. So not a lot of adjustment, right? It's just small adjustments, but those four or five yeah. different little adjustments really count for those three band scores. Okay. Yeah. These days I'm struggling to be more fluent. I don't know why I'm practicing every day, but the fluent is not going to be ready. So language learning is very dynamic. So listen up, everybody. This isn't just for Bharat. Um, a lot of people, some people even tell me like, Adrian, I feel like my English is getting worse. The only way your English can get worse is if you don't practice for a long time. Okay. If you're practicing every day regularly, then your language is improving. Okay. Our brains are beautiful supercomputers. They don't get worse until we get really old, but don't, don't worry about that yet. Um, so lang language learning, it's kind of like this. Okay. So if you look at my fingers in the little screen there, it goes like that. So it's not a clear straight line up. Okay. That's, that's not how we function. We don't like go like that. We kind of like go like this, but you're definitely improving. So as long as you stay the course and you keep practicing, Bharat, I guarantee you will be more accurate and more fluent. Okay. So just keep doing what you're doing. Right. So like, what does it mean? Like I'm making more mistake nowadays as compared to last month. I don't think you're making more mistakes. Not at all. I don't think that answer was um, worse than uh, previous answers that you've had. Um, I, mm -hmm. I think it's I think it's fine. I think what you're feeling and the reality are a little bit different. Um, it's uh, maybe that you're pushing yourself to speak in more complex sentences and that's why you feel like you're making more mistakes. But yeah. you're, okay. All right. So stay the course, right? The brain is a learning machine. So just trust it. Okay. Trust your brain. All right. Okay, um, Bharat, thank you so much for volunteering. That was great. And keep coming back, keep volunteering, and I will keep giving you feedback, and you will see that you're improving, okay? And thank you for that. Okay, have an awesome rest of your night. Bye, Bharat. Bye. All right, so that was Bharat. Okay, let's take another volunteer. Um, all right, Yogan, uh, volunteer, I can see, yeah. Um, yes, that's right, Depesh. Uh, language learning fluctuates, but fluctuates as an upward improvement. So it doesn't fluctuate uh, as a straight line and it doesn't fluctuate downwards, it fluctuates upwards, right? So uh, it's ups and downs, but it's an upward ups and downs, okay? All right, thank you for the applause, Marjona, um, Rashika as well. Um, Okay. Yeah. Believe in yourself, students. Believing in yourself is really important to improving quickly. So we all improve when we practice. By being confident, we improve quickly. Okay. All right. Um, Khadija has uh, sent me a lot of messages. So uh, let's, um, let's try Khadija and then we'll try another student after. Um, maybe I'll pick up a bit of speed here. All right. All right, Khadija, let's try. Are you ready? Again, students, one way to speed up this process is to test your test the system with other students first, even if it's just for a sentence like, hey, this is a test. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Great. It works. I can now call Adrian. Bye. Okay, so here we go, Khadija. Hi, Khadija. Hi. How are you? Thank you. How are you? I'm good. I can hear you, Khadija, but you sound distant. Um, can you hear me now? A little bit better. Yeah, speak as loud as you can so I can hear you okay. nice and clear. Okay. 
Perfect. All right, Khadija, thank you for volunteering. May I ask, where are you? I'm from India. Okay. All right. And I'm quite nervous. Right <laughs> that's <now. laughs> totally okay. Yeah, I mean, and that's the same in the real IELTS. Um, students get really nervous. So this is a good way to kind of break that barrier and, and get some confidence. So good for volunteering. Uh, where are you in India? What part of India are you in? Bangalore. You're in Bangalore. And why are you taking yeah. the IELTS exam? Um, because I'm kind of, um, I need a PR in Canada. So I'm trying for general IELTS. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so for those of our viewers who don't know that acronym, PR means permanent residency. So that means you basically move to Canada and permanent residency is what you get before you get citizenship. So, um, okay, well, I will help you on your journey by asking you a question mm -hmm. and then um, <clears throat> give me a nice full sentence answer, okay? Okay. All right, so we're still talking about borrowing and lending. Uh, can there be negative outcomes to lending valuable items? Um, I feel there could be a lot of negative outcomes if your friend loses the item she borrowed from you or if they break it. Um, it will definitely affect your friendship with them and also will make you extremely upset because you lost something which was very valuable to you. Um, as this happened with my friend, and I remember she was crying all day because her cousin tore her favorite dress, which was gifted to her by her mom on her birthday, two days before I heard about her mom's obituary. And since then, she doesn't talk to her cousin. Okay. Oh, so fast. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> you're, very, you're very good at communicating, I have to say, right off the bat. So that was a band nine response, no question, okay? Um, uh, I can tell that you've had a lot of experience with uh, English. Have you been using English regularly since early childhood? Yeah, yeah. I watch a lot of um, series and movies, so... Uh, which is I interesting. Lot, yeah. I, I think that helps, but just to make it clear for all of our viewers, um, watching a series and movies helps with communication, but in order to, for someone to speak at your level, they actually have to use their English regularly as well. So do you speak English every day to someone or at school or work? I do. I do talk um, with my friends and uh, my, sometimes my sisters as well. Okay, yeah, I can tell that you're, you're using English, so you're applying English, because to speak as fluently as, as you just did, it's not enough to just listen or watch English. You actually have to use English as well, and that was very good. Um, so that was a perfect example of a band nine. Um, you would be a band nine on all levels, so that would be a band nine for fluency, okay. coherence, uh, grammar range, accuracy, um, <clears throat> pronunciation, so all of the features. That's a perfect band nine, or that's what we call a perfect band nine. Um, so yeah. you give a very clear answer. You can improve though. Everybody can improve. Mm -hmm. We can always criticize. So you said, I feel there could be lots of negative outcomes. Um, it could uh, break a friendship and then you explained it and then you went into a beautiful example mm -hmm. about um, your sister lending the dress to your cousin. I can't remember who it was lending to who, but the dress got torn and then um, that yeah. uh, created a rift between um, the uh, relationship, which was really good. Mm -hmm. The one advice that I will give you to even further improve your communication skills is avoid the use of the word you okay so you. when you gave the answer you said well you could you know ruin your relationships you could do this oh, and you're speaking yeah. very directly to me the examiner oh, instead of doing okay. that focus on generalizing so um, people can um, destroy their relationships if they do not pay so instead of you oh, okay. use people use individuals people. borrowers lenders family friends and so on okay so that's just the only piece of criticism you know me i'm a teacher i have to criticize <laughs> so um, avoid the Sorry. use of you okay? okay in your response to even further uh, improve your uh, communication skills okay especially in professional settings so when you're uh, going to be at your workplace or in a school or in a research uh, setting um, be very careful to avoid you when it's not accurate okay sure 
All right. We'll do that. But otherwise, that was fantastic. So, I mean, you have no worries mm -hmm. to sit the um, IELTS exam, and I'm sure that uh, as long as you do well on the other sections, uh, they will look very favorably on your PR registration with this level of English, for sure. Okay. Yeah, I'm really bad at writing, so I'm kind of confused. <laughs> like. Yeah, so just uh, on a side note there, and I and this is very true for uh, many candidates who have very high speaking skills, but they still tend to score lower on writing. I actually got a lower score on writing. I got band nine on everything and then seven five on writing, which surprised me. Oh. Um, for writing, you really have to practice technical English oh. essay mm -hmm. writing skills. So if you have a chance to take like an English writing class from a professional, I highly recommend it. Uh, maybe if it's not available in your area in India, look for a professional writing class online. Okay. Okay. For essay writing. Okay. All right. Um, thank you so much, Khadija. I hope you. Uh, you have a great journey to Canada. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Goodbye. All right. So that was Khadija. Give Khadija an applause. That was fan. That was superb. That's. That's how you want to do it if you want to get a band nine, okay? All right. Um, so let's take uh, one more volunteer for today. Uh, let's see if Diana is available. So let's take someone we haven't heard before. Um, okay, Diana says, I would like to volunteer. All right, Diana, are you ready? And again, students, this interface is 24 seven. It's always available to you. If you don't catch me in these live classes, practice with other students, because you see with Khadija, that's where practice gets you. So she's in India. She didn't spend her whole life in the US or Canada and she's got incredible English. So um, practice makes perfect, right? All right, here we go, Diana. Hi, Diana. I heard you picked up. Can you hear me? I cannot hear you, Diana. So I'm not sure if it's enabling your microphone or the device that you're speaking with or using. Again, students, if you're using mobile and you got, you know, a headset, I highly recommend it. A lot of users have said that works a lot better for them. Mobile phones are pretty tricky um, for these kinds of chat interfaces if you don't have a headset going on. Okay. So, all right, Diana, try it with somebody else. Come back next week in the speaking class. I'll look for you. Okay. All right, let's look for somebody else. So here's Dimitri. Let's see if Dimitri is available. Okay, Dimitri says, hello. <laughs> Are you ready, Dimitri? Okay, would you like to volunteer? I'm not sure if Dimitri is just saying hello or would you like to volunteer? Yes, okay, let's try to catch Dimitri. Hello. Hi, Dimitri. Hello, hello. How are you? Thank you, I'm fine. And what about you? How do you feel? I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah, I'm feeling energetic. I've got lots of plans for the day, so I'm good. Um, where are you, Dimitri? Uh, I'm from Belarus. Belarus? Yes. Fantastic, beautiful, yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, Belarus has got a pretty decent team in the Olympics as well, right? I'm not sure. I didn't uh, trace uh, for some sport events. Okay, fair enough. All right. Um, okay, Dimitri. Um, I love your name, by the way. I uh, I always felt that if I ever have a son, I might call them Dimitri. So um, uh, I will ask you a part three question, Dimitri. Okay. Okay. And give me a nice full sentence answer, and then I'll give you some feedback. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. 
So uh, here we go. So a little bit of a change in topic, but kind of similar still. Let's talk about favors. What are some common situations where people ask for favors from each other? A variety of uh, situation I can mention about, but I think uh, the most common, uh, it is related to our diseases. So from time to time, uh, some individuals uh, are able to uh, ill. So in this way, uh, they can ask uh, their parents, uh, for instance, uh, in order to visit uh, chemistry and purchase all that necessary uh, pharmacy. As an illustration to it, uh, I can mention about myself, and uh, it happened one month ago, so I got ill, and uh, I asked uh, my mother uh, to purchase uh, all that necessary uh, pharmacy. So, uh, uh, I was so uh, happy and I was so uh, glad. Which of these so situations my mother... may be risky to extend the favor? Okay, so I interrupted you because yeah, I thought, yeah. I, there's a reason I do that. And this is what IELTS examiners do. So when the IELTS examiner, Dimitri, feels like you answered the question and then you're just your story keeps going, they'll interrupt you to get to the next question. Yeah, okay. So first tip, when you're finished, just stop, wait for the next question, okay? Um, yes. So here you said you asked your mother and your mother helped you and brought you some medicine. Yes. And that was the end. That was done. You were done there. OK, um, yeah, so yeah. that was fine. OK, um, you are going to get about a band six for your response. Band six means that you're fluent. And Dimitri, I think you're fluent. I think that you can speak English more or less without stopping to express your ideas. However, your accuracy costs you band scores, specifically your word choice. So the words that you're choosing are a little bit um, off. They're a little bit awkward. And I'm trying to consider, you know, British English, American English, Australian English, and thinking, okay, well, if I were British, would that make more sense to me? But I think that um, still some of the words are a bit awkward, okay? So like you said, that uh, they go to the chemistry. Um, we don't call it the chemistry. We call it a drugstore or we call it a pharmacy. And you don't get pharmacy from the pharmacy, interestingly enough. You get medicine um, <laughs> or remedies uh, from the pharmacy. Okay, so I was able to figure out what you were saying, but I had to really use uh, my thinking to be like, okay, that pharmacy means medicine, that pharmacy means drugstore, so uh, chemistry means drugstore. So I had to kind of put, put it all together in my head and that made it a little bit difficult. And that's what lowers your score, okay? Yeah. Um, and you said right off, um, I would say the full expression here is right off the bat. Right off the bat, a situation I can think about um, is, uh, and you said it's related to our diseases, which again, I got what you meant, but it's a bit unnatural. So um, I can think about is when a person, just keep it simple, when a person feels sick. And, yep. and cannot take care of themselves. Okay. Um, some people, uh, when they feel ill, uh, they ask their parents uh, to go to a pharmacy and uh, pick up some uh, medicine. I did this uh, just last week. Okay, um, so that would be one answer. Now, the other point here, Dimitri, pay attention, is the question is asking you for situations, okay? Um, so that's plural, right? Uh, you yeah. have to give at least two contents when it's a plural, okay? So one is when people feel sick and they are not able to act for themselves. Another situation perhaps is uh, when they do not have time, right? So um, also 
when people do not have time, they may ask uh, another person uh, for help, um, like covering a shift at work. Okay, so just nice and fast. And then I won't stop you. If you're giving me another situation, and then I'm realizing, okay, you're giving me another situation to answer this question more accurately, then I will not interrupt you because I want to give you that chance to uh, give me a full, complete answer, okay? Yes. All right, uh, Dimitri, let me ask the question again. Uh, let's do a bit of repetition with some more accurate uh, words, and then hopefully those will sink in and grab hold of your brain, okay? Um, yes. And uh, we'll go from there. So uh, here we go. What are some common situations where people ask for favors from each other? Right off the bat, a situation I can think about is when a person feels sick and cannot take care of themselves. Uh, some people, when they feel ill, they ask their parents to go to the pharmacy and pick up medicine. I did this just last week. Also, when people do not have time, they may ask another person for help, like covering a shift at work. What are common situations where people ask for favors from each other? Right off the bat, a situation I can think about uh, is when a person feels sick and uh, cannot take care of themselves. Some people, when they feel, feel ill, they ask their parents to go to a pharmacy and pick up some medicine. I did this just last week. Also, when people do not have time, they may ask another person for help, like covering a shift at work. Nice. Okay, much better. Very accurate. Okay, great. Good yeah, job, Dimitri. Thank you. You're thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dimitri, yeah. a question. Um, why are you taking the IELTS? Uh, I didn't. Uh, in the future, uh, I will convey myself to I didn't speak in English country. Okay. Awesome. Any idea what country yet? Any favorites? I haven't uh, made up my mind yet, but I think in the future I will definitely choose. Okay. Awesome. Well, I wish you the best in your studies and also in uh, your plans for exploring the world. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks a lot, Dimitri. Have a great rest of your day. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, all right, so that was Dimitri, everybody. Um, and I'm going to stop there uh, for today. But again, students, remember this interface is available for everyone. And um, you can practice at any time. Just log into your account, click on student partner speaking, and practice with each other. Uh, again, this interface, you can find it at aehelp.com or gileshelp.com, okay? And uh, if you like our courses, our materials, spend a little money, help yourself, maximize your learning. Uh, use the code BETTERNOUNS25, just above my head there, uh, to save yourself 25% off of our premium package. Doesn't cost a lot of money at all. Uh, thank you so much to our volunteers and to all of our viewers. I hope you have an awesome uh, rest of your weekend. I will be back on Wednesday with more speaking and with more live IELTS classes. My name is Adrian and I'm signing out from Victoria, the capital city of the province of British Columbia here in Canada. Much love to all of you wherever you are in this amazing world of ours. Bye for now, everyone.